Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria and today we're talking about positive discipline. Specifically what we do as the adults to prepare ourselves in order to implement respectful parenting and positive discipline. So if you're looking for specific examples of how to approach difficult situations with toddlers with positive discipline, that's not this video. If you are interested in that video, let me know and let me know specific examples you're interested in and I can definitely make a follow-up. You can either leave me comments down below or if you'd like to be anonymous, send me a DM over on Instagram or on TikTok. But I have received a lot of requests from you guys about how to handle your own big emotions as the adult in order to implement positive discipline effectively and i haven't seen that discussed a lot so while this was true back on what was it sunday that i recorded this at this point as i'm editing the video ashley has actually posted one on the same topic and we've got different approaches and strategies that we utilize so i'm going to link hers in the description box as well because it's an amazing video and i think between the two of us you should be able to find at least something that's going to be of use to you before i get into what works for us i want to remind you that people are imperfect creatures we all make mistakes we're simply trying to do our best and improve each and every day and so these are the things that have really helped us implement positive discipline and respond parenting and I hope you can take away something helpful for yourself from these tips. The first step is to prepare the environment and that doesn't only mean preparing the environment that allows for your child to have maximum independence to the best of their abilities and to the best of your current living environment that also means preparing the environment for you to be able to focus on the tasks at hand. So for me that means Sunday night going throughout the house and finding all those random knickknacks that have made their way in odd places throughout the weekend picking them up to make sure that come Monday morning they're not distracting me and aggravating me by being a nuisance to my eyesight. If you've got a toddler that's developing a lot of new skills and you haven't set up something like a little weaning table for them or a way for them to access their snacks independently, a way for them to get their clothes independently, you may start looking at ways to implement those kind of yes spaces for your toddler. I do have an entire Montessori home tour that I will link to you here. Maybe it will give you some ideas of what you can implement to allow your child to be more independent and assert their independence and have to ask you less questions and simply make those decisions on their own. If you're finding that you're constantly cleaning toys, for example, it may be time to pare down what you have out. It may be time to implement a different type of storage system or it may be time to look into whether those activities are not actually engaging your child enough and you simply need to do a fresh rotation. I think controlling your environment is the simplest and easiest task to start with because that's a physical thing that we can definitely change time and time again. It doesn't involve quite as much work as emotional regulation. But the next tip is to prepare the adult, which will usually be yourself, the person who is watching this video, and that doesn't always mean emotionally. I mean prepare yourself for the day ahead. Let's say your child is getting a checkup tomorrow. Going to the doctor is usually a very stressful day for everyone. Do you have your keys? Do you know where your wallet is? Do you know where your insurance cards are? Prepare that ahead of time. Are you going to need snacks for your child? Are they going to need some extra water? Do you have diapers in the diaper bag? Prepare that the night before. Don't leave this until the morning of when you're already trying to get through breakfast, get them dressed, hurry them up, and then have to find that your license is nowhere to be found. It might also look like knowing that for the past week you have been very sleep deprived and you definitely need to catch up on your Z's because otherwise you'll be a much more aggravated person the next day. Another way to prepare the adult is to educate yourself more and learn more about all the different ways that you can implement positive discipline, respectful parenting, all the different activities that you could be setting up for a child. But that also looks like knowing when to step back and knowing when to recognize that you're getting caught up in the highlights and forgetting that we are all people too. We're posting the things that work, the things that are helpful, the things that are hopefully going to help you. And if you're finding that you're comparing yourself to all of the parents that are online, take a step back. The piece of advice that my mom has given to me the most throughout my pregnancy and motherhood journey, your child needs a healthy and happy adult. So it doesn't matter if you have the perfectly set up shelf, it doesn't matter if you have the perfectly cooked meal, what they need is to see your warm and smiling face. Not because you're putting on an act, but because you genuinely feel happy and content. And so if all the online content has gone past the helpful stage and is now reaching into the comparison stage, stop. Take a step back and enjoy your time with your child. My next step is to find out what are your strengths and your weaknesses when it comes to emotional regulation and to do so for any other adult that is assisting you with raising your child full time at home. So for us, that means looking into my strengths and weaknesses as well as Jun Young's. He is an incredibly patient person. And I think that's not only his personality, but the fact that he went to a Buddhist school and in middle school, as well as the Korean army when he was older, he's really learned to perfect his emotional regulation and how to be patient. I, on the other hand, am an incredibly impatient and emotional person. So when I feel my patience running low and my emotions taking over, if he is nearby and he is at home, I defer to him and he takes over in that moment so I can go cool down. On the other hand, he is not very comfortable with any activities that create a huge mess, especially all the water transfer and pouring activities. 
So anytime Stella is interested in those, I take over. While those may sound like really small changes, they've really allowed us to take out those extra stressors in life at a time when being a parent during a pandemic is already stressful enough. With that comes identifying what is the hardest moment throughout the day. For us, for example, it's that hour before dinner. And I think this is true for a lot of people. This is a time when we're all running out of energy, including our kids, we're all getting hangry, and we're just waiting for that final moment when we can all sit down and eat in peace. We have started focusing specifically on that hour before dinner and figuring out all the different ways that we can try to minimize the stress leading up to dinner in order to head to the dinner table in a much more peaceful manner. As Stella has gotten older, she has shown that what she is interested in, for example, is helping with dinner prep. So a lot of times she's very interested in helping cut cucumbers and cucumbers are her favorite snack. It's also not something that fills her up too much to the point where she's not interested in dinner once it comes around. So right now what is really working for us is if I am cooking on the stove and she's not ready to assist with that just yet, Junyoung will be nearby at the weaning table helping her cut some cucumbers up for our salad. And because she's physically close to me and she's physically involved with helping dinner, she's satisfied enough to not be throwing a tantrum and not to be aggravated. And we're all having a much more peaceful environment so that is the prep work now what about in that moment in that moment when you feel yourself getting stressed when you feel that you're about to have an emotional outburst as much as possible if i feel that coming up and junyoung is home i try to defer to him immediately hey i need a minute please take over now, a lot of times that's not really an option and taking a deep breath also doesn't really work for me what has worked for me is having one very specific memory that I refer back to in that moment and just having that feeling to kind of snap me out of the situation. If you had joined me for my life, I briefly discussed about how when I was pregnant, we had quite a few scares with Stella during her second ultrasound. For a good portion of my pregnancy, we had no idea where we were and what would happen when Stella was born. And during those days, the only thing I wanted was to give birth to a healthy child. If I'm about to lose my cool, I try to bring myself back to those days in the dark rooms with the ultrasound with the doctors going mm, we're not really sure what's going on and that snaps me out really quickly but it doesn't always work though so what do we do when it doesn't work and we do make the mistake and we lose our cool immediately i apologize and at this age stella is 19 months it's incredible how quickly they forgive and they just move on i often actually have to run after her and give her a hug and tell her i'm sorry i shouldn't have done that i lost my cool and go through that whole process with her i also find it incredibly helpful to just stop everything else put away my phone i turn off the stove i stop cleaning i stop whatever i was doing and stella and i just sit down and we have some time together i think of it as skin to skin with a newborn really helps the adult and the child get on the same page emotionally, physiologically. And I think just sitting down and spending 5, 10, 15 minutes with your child, cuddling and reading some books or playing whatever game they wanted to play, really helps the child get that emotional connection that they were craving and also helps us as adults slow down and really focus on what's important. We can get really caught up in all the other stressors of our lives. And for us, our world is so much bigger than our child. And so if they're having a hard time navigating a small part of their small world, it looks so much bigger to them than it does to us. So taking a moment from our incredibly busy day to be with them allows them to have that emotional connection that they crave, but also allows us to really take a moment and step away from all the other stressors of life and really connect with this other one special human in our life as well. At the end of a day, especially at the end of a really rough day, I also like to sit down and analyze what happened. What was happening with Stella or what was happening with myself that really caused us to have a rough day. We all know that toddlers will throw tantrums if they're overstimulated or they're understimulated, they didn't have enough of a nap time, they didn't spend enough time outside. But as adults, we're not really all that different. If we don't feed our bodies well, if we don't give ourselves time to move, if we don't get enough sleep, we also get overstimulated and understimulated and we also have our own version of tantrums which result in us losing our cool. We also need to analyze what exactly is happening happening to us and in our lives that is causing us to have these emotional outbursts. Doesn't mean we're always going to be able to control and eliminate everything that is causing us to lose our cool, but it really does help to take a moment to step back and figure out what exactly is causing us undue stress. What can we do to just be a calmer version of ourselves? I've also found it incredibly helpful to talk about these things. Talk about it with my husband, talk about it with my parents. I'm not always looking for advice, although sometimes I am. Sometimes it just really helps to hear the other adult in your life tell you, it's okay, these things happen. Some of you may know I've worked with the kids in my mom's Montessori school and I've also worked in a Korean school teaching English. And between working with classrooms full of elementary kids or preschoolers, being a parent to one singular child is so much more difficult and so much more emotionally taxing. Children naturally will display their worst behavior 
to their caregiver because they feel a lot more comfortable doing so. And so our children are naturally going to show all of their tantrums, all of their big emotions and big feelings in front of us. Meaning that our job as their parents is going to definitely be a lot more difficult. Regardless of whether you're a stay-at-home parent or a working parent, we all have our difficulties. Just remember to give yourself grace. We're not perfect parents. Nobody is the perfect parent. But what we can be is the parent that is continuously trying to improve and be the best version of ourselves in that specific day for our child. If you have questions or comments or anything you'd like to add to this conversation, definitely leave it in the comments. If you want to see more videos about positive discipline and how we implement it at home, definitely let me know what kind of topics you'd like to see me cover. And until next time, hope you stay safe.